but it's even sad, right? <laughs> That's really the predominant <laughs> mood of our time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who's going around? Good timing. Right, and Food I said... Food poisoning is always the like, <laughs> ooh. I save that for very important occasions. I've... You know, I mean, you know how ducks have sex or whatever. No, I don't. Yeah, they'll like hold one duck down and it's off. I've seen it. I know it's... they have the corkscrew penis. Yeah, it's, the... it's horrifying. I've seen it in person. It's really bad. No, it's wrong. I don't <laughs> I don't believe anything I just said. <laughs> oh, hello. It's one of those nights. It's cold out. Not snowy. Cold. I just missed Louie, CK, at the creek. I was going to go to this show, uh, and of course, I, I didn't. I, I actually stood in the aisle at a Dwayne Reed looking at the Rogaine the case, the locked Rogaine case. <laughs> That is not a story of victory. I just came back home and then found out a bunch of people uh, telling me that Louis was at the creek. The story of my comedy career in New York is me just missing Louis. That's, I mean, that's one thread of it. I love that guy, and I would love to see him. I get a little starstruck. I don't get starstruck by, like, actors, but comedians, they make me giggle a little bit. Not giggle. It's like romantic feelings, you know? I mean, it's not sexual, but you, you feel something. Like a little butterfly in your stomach. Isn't that weird? It's the same thing. I dropped off my laundry and looked at Rogaine tonight. It was a big life decision. It seemed like if I should go back on it, you know, it, se it seems like one of those, well, I should just accept the fact that I'm balding, you know? I got some hair. But it's getting to this point where it's just, it's very thick and lustrous, except for this one area that it looks like someone poured uh, Roundup pesticide on my head. <laughs> there was just some, something bad happened there. It's like a crop circle or like a landing pad of sadness on the back of my head. It's interesting. People don't like hearing you talk about it. I, I've, I've tried to talk about my, my balding on stage and I, I it seems to make people uncomfortable I, maybe because I'm uncomfortable with it but I'm I guess that's getting old accepting your that you're aging right how's that for fun well I had a lot of help with this episode Vince Fairchild who works at WNYC helped me out I'm very grateful to him he's got a great ear for conversation and editing and I've known him for a while. Uh, we worked at WBUR in Boston together. And um, yeah, I hope that I think we might be collaborating on, on a lot of these episodes. So as this thing kind of forms, uh, Vince is uh, hopefully going to be along for the ride. Uh, he's a really talented guy, and maybe I can talk to him one of these days on here. You guys would like him. He introduced me to the Cortado. Do you know the Cortado? It's like a espresso. It comes in like a weird little bowl kind of thing it's like a wide shot glass it's very good <sighs> i'm going home for thanksgiving you may be listening to this on thanksgiving hopefully maybe this is a refuge for you on thanksgiving maybe there's some family listening to this i like to think of some <laughs> group of strangers <laughs> and maybe maybe a family in some sort of weird prison where they just have to listen to podcasts together as a family i don't know what that would entail or how that would happen but uh it's it's a funny image to me you know what else is funny frankenstein wearing flannel pajamas i think about that that makes me happy when it's cold out uh embroidered with fm on the pocket not just m because you know it's frankenstein's monster not just frankenstein not oh f see i fucked that up it should be f that's what i get for trying to tell you jokes and not speak from the heart what? How are you? Where have you been? That's like a Joyce Carol Oates story, I think. What? How are you? How have you been? <laughs> I think that won uh, uh, Best American Short Stories one year. <sighs> Support for What's Your Yarn Worth comes from your nieces and nephews. Say hi to your nieces and nephews. 
uh, this holiday season. Say hi to them. Don't snap at them. Enjoy the time that you have with your nieces and nephews. Uh, that's nieces and nephews. Big supporter of What's Your Yard Worth with Andy Farnsworth. I got pictures of my nieces and nephews, actually, right here on my desk. I love them. They're headshots, you know? Yearbook photos are early headshots. I miss those guys. My mom sent me these pictures. I, I don't know if I told you guys this. I have a early onset dementia, so I, I will probably, over the course of this thing, repeat a lot of stories over and over. It seems to run in my family. Story amnesia. The nice thing is you get to tell every story for the first time again. But there's this weird, you know, you can see it in someone's face. You're telling it again. I asked my mom to send me that one of those light boxes, the crazy boxes that you sit in front of. You know those things? You look at it. It's like a TV with nothing happening on it. And you just sit there. You just look like an insane person. Uh, sitting in front of fluorescent light. It's actually quite nice. Anyway, she didn't send it. She sent uh, some pictures of my nieces and nephews. You can follow me on Twitter, at Bambi Fransworth and AndyFarnsworth.com. You can just Google me if you want. You'll probably get me. But there's also a weatherman in Salt Lake City. who He's quite a prominent weatherman. So, you know, you might end up checking him out, which is fine. I mean, he's a Mormon weatherman, lives in Salt Lake City. Seems like a family man. Today's episode, this is a, a long conversation, a very fun conversation with Barbara Gray, who is a comedian living in Los Angeles. She's on the Lady to Lady podcast. It's a, it's a weekly podcast and a talk show at the UCB out there in Los Angeles. LadyToLady.com, at lady to lady Comedy. That's the number two. Just at Lady to Lady Comedy. That's on Twitter. She's on there with Brandy Posey and Tess Barker. Um, those are great ladies. She was out here doing some some comedy. I've known her for a little while, and so we uh, we talked. I did spring this on her. She, I don't think she. We were just gonna go for a walk, and I hap- I honestly happened to have my equipment on me, which I do sometimes, and I thought, well, maybe I'll ask her if she wants to do this. So. Uh, this is Barbara, completely unprepared for doing my podcast, and and I think being very fun and engaging and uh, interesting person. Can I put this on you? Yes. What do you want to eat? Look at this little cute. It's like I mostly a, need water more than anything. Do, do you mind drinking after me? Oh no. Yes, thank you. Okay. Do you have a pocket? Yeah. What? You're on a bunch of shows, right? I saw um, that you're on a bunch of shows. Are yeah. You, are you burnt? Are you burnt out? A little bit. Well, yeah. I'm not burnt out. I'm just like I'm not having Can as I much touch fun your as butt? I was hoping. Yeah. I'm, I'm not having as much fun as I would hope. Really? Yeah. Because it's is it overwhelming? I think I'm a little overwhelmed. I'm a little out of it, like on this trip. And I've been here before and done this and not felt like this, but I think I just life is a little crazy. So I'm What's like, What's the matter? I don't know. I'm just been depressed and trying to get out of it. Dude, welcome. Yeah. To my that makes me. I mean, I don't want you to be depressed. <laughs> no, but. it is nice to commiserate with people for sure. How do I? Like, do I just what, clip this on here. Yeah. Like, what kind of depressed? Just like, you, you know, do you, how does it manifest? I just like, I get really antisocial and I sit inside all day and I get scared of going places. Yes. Yeah. But do, do you think that's a, I think that's kind of a normal reaction to me. But I've never been like that. As so I'm, it's very, it's very new for me. As I'm wiring a microphone to you. <laughs> Don't need to be afraid. You're just on all the time. You just have to be on. That's all. Sorry. That's fine. This is you a You just want to make sure it doesn't get caught. Get, yeah, on your fall side. out. Or should I just put it in my pocket? Yeah. Yeah. It'll probably be better. My Dude, I had that when I was in Los there Angeles that summer of 2012, and it really freaked Like, I could I could honestly not leave the house. Yeah, well, it's new. For, it's very new for me, because I used to never be like that. So I think... Oh, oops. Can I have the rest of this? Okay. Yeah, you totally Sorry, can. I'm, like, so thirsty. Um, yeah, it's very new, so I'm just kind of, like, dealing with it. This is cool. I like... It's a good, good idea. Oh, the leaves are so pretty. I went on this, like... I really wanted to try and see the leaves change, you know, since I live in LA. So, 
my friend took me on some like cruise up the Hudson to see the leaf change. Oh, I saw that. I saw those photos. Yeah, it was cool. But then like we we just got drunk. Like we yeah, did, we didn't even really see the leaves that much. I just got like wasted. But the, you can still you can still understand beauty when you're hammered. That's true, but it wasn't like that doesn't I wish, negate your. Experience. I wish I would have. I guess yeah. There's only so much you can like look at it, but this is nice to, like be in the middle of it now because like. It, we like, well, the point was you like stop at this little town. You're just like walk around in the cute town. But we just like, st like stayed in a bar the whole time. <laughs> but that's progress if you're bedridden for depression. <laughs> yeah, that is true. No, um, it was really good to do that. Yeah, I don't know. This trip is it's weird. I think it's because I'm, this is my like third time visiting New York. And this time I got on some shows that I like was more... You know, like where it's like, oh, cool! Like I was yeah. able to get on this show. Yeah. But I, so it's a lot more. But it's a lot more pressure. Yeah. And I've, for the first time ever doing stand up, I don't feel as confident on stage as I used to. So like, I'm not, you know, doing as well as I really want to, on these shows. So it's a lot of like pressure to put on yourself, I guess. New York has this energy though that I think it's really hard for everybody, coming back, even if they're mm -hmm. like super seasoned. There's something about like. <laughs> It's a very, like, and obviously you need to prove yourself everywhere, but I feel it way more here. Yeah, of course. Yeah, maybe that's it. I don't know. Isn't this a beautiful park? Yeah, this is gorgeous. I feel like they film a lot of stuff here that I don't, I don't know what, but... Yeah, stuff. Something. Lots of dead joggers on <laughs> Law <and> Order. <laughs> this is, like... I actually have never been to this part of the park, but we're this going really along. Cool. Maybe like 15 yards is Flatbush oh, okay. Avenue. Wow, you can't tell. It feels like we're in the middle of the woods. I know. This is neat. Look at the leaves. Oh, wow. I'm starting to accept that maybe this is my weekend, like midweek. Yeah, how do you? Because I schedule? work through the week. And, well, I have these like deadlines that are usually on Monday morning. I'm kind of in a weird place too now. Yeah, where like my stuff is due. The next, like, and I'll just stay up all night doing it instead of... I fucking make, I create these, like, train wrecks of, like, deadlines. I think that's very normal, especially for people like us. Yeah, but it could, it could be less painful. I'm it just, could, it it, could. I call it the Farnsworth just-in-time delivery method. <laughs> and it's fucking painful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm planning right now my email that I have to send being like, Oh, I'll, you know, I'm having, like, a computer problem. I'll have this to you tomorrow. <laughs> Which is fine. I, I mean, I don't really ever do that, but um, I don't know. It's What's whatever. the computer Fuck process? So you're, you're, you're weaving a web of lies. Yeah, this is a lie. But I also don't ever pull this I stuff. I did so that. It's like they can what did I say? It. I said I had the flu. Flu's going around. Good timing. Right. And Food I said, poisoning is always the like, <laughs> ooh. That's I know. That's like, I save that for very important occasions. I've, I've, I feel like I've ruined the reputation of a few businesses just based on... <laughs> Just They're like, really? Fake, Where do you think? The fake food poisoning. I was like, Steak and Shake. This was in Illinois, <laughs> and I would always blame Steak and Shake <laughs> on Veterans Parkway. Yeah. I mean, you know, Steak and Shake can take a few hits. They're okay. I feel like they can. Yeah. Do you remember? Did you have Steak and Shake? No, I don't think I've ever been That's there, actually. That's not a Utah. I've heard, it's a, I've heard of it, but no, I've never Are you there. embarrassed to say you're from Utah? <laughs> not really. Are you ashamed? I mean, I'm not ashamed. It's more just like... I don't know what people's expectations are, you know? It was fun. Last night I did um, a show at the Village Lantern and it was a great room. It was like a mostly black room, which I don't do even in LA. So I was really excited and I was like, hey, I was like, I'm from Salt Lake City. So like, you're literally the most black people I've ever seen. And they like loved it, you yeah, know? Yeah. So uh, it was really fun. It's really fun to just be honest about it and not talk about, you know, where, yeah. like, I'm from Salt Lake. It was, like, white and Mormon as shit. And I'm not even from there, but it's my it's the last place I lived, and right. so people always think I'm... Yeah. Oh, people always... I mean, obviously, people assume you're Mormon, like, which I get, but I'm not, you know, so... Yeah. I kind of wish I was. It'd probably give me more material, but whatever. I got laid more in Utah than I have here. <laughs> I've and heard it's really hard here. It's impossible. Well, I mean, you gotta like, you gotta go outside. Well, and you like, that if helps. you're sober, that's yeah, that's hard. That's like the number for me. That would, yeah. And but I don't like, I don't like online. No. Yeah. So it's like, if you don't drink, you're not doing online dating. Like, what the fuck? Do you do? The things that serve you in comedy don't always serve you in online dating, like because it comes yeah. off as, I feel like it comes off as creepy, sometimes. 
so nice. I started asking women whether or not they owned plants, which I feel like is a good <laughs> That's barometer. Pretty good. That's right? a good line, yeah. It's like, but then it's like, I'm, I'm implying it's, that they have to be nurturing or something. Right. It's so hard, I think, like, online dating is so rough, especially as a guy, well, both ways, obviously, but, you know, girls are just getting so many, like, messages that yeah, you, you have to that. be unique, but you don't want to be creepy, but you don't want to be, like, too intense. It's a, I think it's a really hard line to, like, walk. It's a very, it's a very specific skill, like, online dating. It is a skill. Yeah. For sociopaths. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm so glad to not do that shit anymore. Oh my god. Yeah, so you got a man? Yeah, I've been dating another comic for like a year. So That's good. a long time in comedy years. It's a long time. For me, it's but yeah, I mean I haven't been with anybody this long for like God, for like ten years or something. Um so yeah, it's nice. But it is different, you know, I'm used to like I'm adjusting to like not like having that part of my life open or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely worth it. Like, I'll sometimes I'll be out, I'll see like people at bars now. Like, you know, they obviously just met and they're like talking. It looks like they're hitting it off, but I'm like happy to not be them. Like, cause yeah, just like oh, I know what that is. I don't want that. They look a lot of times. They look attractive and handsome and happy though. <laughs> of course, yeah. I, I mean, I think a lot of times everyone has this secret handshake that I don't know about like they have, they know this these rules that I, I it's like a, this script I have in my head that I know is not true but of what for like hooking up or well yeah that is just succeeding at oh. life at comedy <laughs> it's not negative like thinking that isn't right. accurate but you forget everyone else is faking it too yeah that's the the real thing is that you just have to fake it but if you're a very self-aware person that's almost impossible cuz I like that's why the city is so fucking hard. If yeah. you're, if if you're, you're sensitive. Yeah. If you're not like an asshole. Yeah, because I like think all the time, I'm like, man, I wish I was better at selling myself, at like bullshitting, but I'm just not. I just don't have it in me. And then you see the people who are, you know, and they do well. And it's so fucking annoying. And I think that's definitely the same with like dating or whatever. Yeah, if I could just skip like two days into it, I'd be good. <laughs> the, fir the first part's the fun first though, the part. flirting and stuff is fun. Yeah. I met my boyfriend out for a drink and we were, I was like, let's pretend we don't know each other. And then we were flirting and it was so weird because you just don't flirt anymore when you've been, you know. So you already knew each other? Oh yeah. And then you were like, let's go out for a drink and I like, I like was like, meet me at this bar and I'm gonna pretend, I, I don't know, I was trying to like be, you know kinky or something and then yeah but like we met and like flirted and it was so weird because I was like oh it's you just the flirting like the way you flirt is so different when you are trying to like seduce somebody or whatever you know it's very interesting it is I hadn't acted like that for a long time because <laughs> normally I'm just like get the fuck out of my way you piece of shit you know <laughs> I'm very abusive <laughs> I think I am realizing I am too like I like to pride myself that I'm this like uh, open non-manipulative book but I am my, my so one of my tactics is to like open up on like a suicidal level like I I'll, right. like it's like you draw them in and they're insane like oh amount he's of, so sensitive and yeah and I'm basically just gauging how okay they are with boundary crossing you know <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty common. I've definitely fallen for that before. Yeah. And then, because girls do like that. They're like, yeah. drawn in by like the mysterious, and then they think they'll be the one to save you and all that shit. Whoa, this is so pretty. I want to go look at these ducks. Wow. A lot of people come and get like headshots down here. Of course. Around this There's people fishing. That's so weird. For ducks. They're duck fishing. <laughs> so Just roast some duck tonight. This is gorgeous. It's like so picturesque. They're handsome ducks. One, two, three, four, five, six. The men are the green ones, right? Uh, yes. They're handsome ducks. Aren't they? they I don't know. But they like, you know, I mean, you know how ducks have sex or whatever. No, I don't. They like gang rape. 
What? Yeah, they like hold one duck down, and it's off. I've seen it. I know it's, they had the corkscrew penis. Yeah, it's the, it's horrifying. I've seen it in person. It's really bad. But anyway, let's you've not seen think about it in that. person. Yeah. <laughs> As we look at this like serene <laughs> picture, I want to take a picture. Yeah. Ooh, look at all these. Oh, I thought they were, they're acorns. I thought they were snail things. What is this thing? Oh yeah, they have a lot of wedding receptions there. It's like I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so what? do you, like, when you're in your, you're, like, staying inside, do you not go do comedy at all, or do you make yourself? Uh, yes, and I mean a little bit of both. I mean, this time is the first time. I almost never feel like doing it. Right. I mean, if I didn't, if I waited till I felt like doing it, I would. Yeah, of course. You know, but, but this time has been different. I haven't really. I mean, I just hosted a show on Sunday night. Oh, there's some wedding pics. See. But are you glad when you do it? Yeah, of course. Okay, good. It's I've never well, loathed and, and dreaded something so, that gives <laughs> me so much satisfaction. <laughs> I, I not like I usually don't I'm usually looking forward to doing it feeling a little more like not like as excited you know now but I don't usually I'm excited to do it well I mean like my first two years I I really was just yelling at people about right. my brother being dead and being sexually abused as a kid <laughs> and I and I wondered why I wasn't getting laughs right away and <laughs> but uh and now I mean it's weird now I'm turning into like Ray Romano it's they're handsome <laughs> yeah it's a handsome couple now you've turned into Ray Romano <laughs> That is a good pig. Do you want that? What? Oh, that that exact thing? I don't really know. Do you want actually, like a big I don't wedding? know if I. I still am figuring. Wait, let's go this way so you can get some. Food. I'm still figuring out if I want to get married and all that stuff. I like grew up really thinking I wanted kids and all that, but now that I'm like 32, I'm like, okay, realistically, uh, when is this gonna happen? You know? Yeah. I mean, I kind of gave myself, I was like, 35, and then if I'm not married, I'll just have a kid. And I was like, what the, f now I'm like, what the fuck am I thinking? That seems like a plan. I guess, but I don't really, I don't know, you know, the more I go on, it's like, do I want kids? Or, I want kids because I want, I love my parents, and I want them to, like, I want to have kids so my parents, like, can have another grandkid, and, like, I can experience that with them. Yeah. Being a parent and stuff. But, I'm the same. I. Yeah. So you do want them for sure, you think? I don't know. I have a friend who just asked me to be a, a, a sperm donor. Really? For real. Whoa! I'm not just, I know, and I'm really like... You have to say yes, because then you get like best of both worlds. You get a kid, but then you don't have to. I know. I, I <laughs> should be just like, for like as cavalier as I am with my sperm, just out in the world, like, I shouldn't even be thinking about it. <laughs> but... Cavalier. But I... Well, like it's if a you, big question. What happens though, like if she dies, and also like, aren't I like legally, <laughs> like bound? That's why they have paternity tests. So you have to but, pay alimony. But you can sign a thing that's like, I am literally only giving you my sperm. I'm not. <laughs> that's like really saying to this kid, I did not like. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with you. Which so she's single and she wants. She, yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. And she's great, and we've been friends and. Like, we tried to date once, and it just was a little too intense. Right. And, um... And that means you guys are, like, have sex. She's not just yeah, gonna, like... Yeah, I think so. I don't not, think it's, it's like, a turkey-baster like, yeah. situation. <laughs> That's a lot. I mean, to me, that would be a lot emotionally to take on, to, like, be like, okay, we have to have sex. Because, you know, not doing that with a partner, it's, like, a lot. I know. And I am, like, I'm usually really detached from sex, but I know enough now to know that it's fucking human crazy glue. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, 
There's not going to be a casual. This will be like no. the least casual and situation. And what's fucked up is that I honestly, in my head, I'm like, yeah, well, I could have sex. I'm not thinking about a, hu- a whole life. Like how? I mean, well, yeah, but that's how most human lives are made. I know, you know? it's got to so. be. No, if you really knew what yeah. you were getting into. I mean, like, if we could see, if you could see, like, what if you could walk around and see every person with a little light over their head? That determined if their parents actually were planning for them or if they were just, like, a yeah. hot night of fucking that no one expected was going to turn into this. I'm pretty sure. I think I'm being honest in saying that of all the people I know, I, she would be someone I would... What, you would want to Feel date? good about... Well, oh, no, no, about, like, giving her my sperm. <laughs> that sounds weird. Of all the people I know, she's the most <laughs> Well, confident. she's the one asking, so yeah, of course you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting. Wow. I guess I didn't think about that part. Like, if I did decide to have a kid when I was 35 by myself, like, oh, yeah, I'd have to choose probably a friend, you know? And we were hanging out, and she brought it up, and then she wanted to, like, change the subject and talk about it. And I was like, "So the first time she brought it up? The subject can <laughs> never be changed now. This is what we're on forever. <laughs> Yeah, there's no we're going never, back. There's no going back from that. We're never talking about anything else after this. Wow. Yeah. Would you do it? I guess you have to know the situation. But I mean, I don't. Yeah, I have no clue. I can't. I can't say. This is, I like this. They have like sandwiches and shit. Oh yeah, this looks good. And there's also a. Well, this is probably the best. No, this is fun. I have no, like, since I'm here for so long, I have no, like, I have to get the best, like, you yeah. know, I'm not really worried about it. Walk around with this thing on. Shit, there's a lot. Yours are so cold. Yeah, you just ordered, they have everything. Oh, wow. Oh, this is crazy. Yeah. Hi. Can I have um, a wholesome? Oh wait, I gotta order for you. A uh, large iced coffee with cre- cream and sugar. Just a little sugar though. Can I have a wholesome breakfast wrap? Come here, please. Come work. Come work. They have a good breakfast wrap. It's a little late. It still feels like breakfast time to me. Yeah, why not? Breakfast is always good. Can I get a grilled cheese with cheddar on sourdough? Yeah. Uh, white bread's fine. Uh, cheddar. Andy, if you're listening to this, I am walking away from you. I'm looking at garbanzo beans and bananas and oranges. It's very exciting. This is a fun podcast. Thanks for meeting up with me. Uh, no, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh my god. What? I just got the best email. My, my manager <laughs> is out with food poisoning today. <laughs> so I can't get on a call with her. That's so funny. That's awesome. That has to be fake. There's no way. That's hilarious. Does that help? How do you, does that help you get shows? No, she doesn't help with shows. I've got like I want to write for TV. And yeah. She's helped me get some meetings, but I don't. I don't think it's very. I don't know if it's working that well, so we'll see. Yeah. I'm kind of trying to evaluate all that, but it's really hard to figure out because you're like, well, if I leave, does that mean I have nobody forever, or you know, will I find a better yeah. person? Yeah. It's the same with like a person, like dating somebody. Exactly. I'm not gonna. You're like I don't want to give up. Thank you. I don't want to give up because then I've got nothing. Yeah. Is there anybody that's over here? Oh, uh, let's, let's, I guess we'll just sit in the park. Is that okay? Okay, yeah. My whole goal, my goal in life is to, like, is just to relax and not, like, to be able to talk like I would without having a microphone on me. I think that's part of why <laughs> I do this. Right. But, like, there's always a part, you know, that you're, like, you're listening differently, you're talking differently. 
Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel pr- I feel comfortable. It's, yeah, you're good. On my podcast, like it's like very much like trying to be on all the time, and it's yeah. You guys are. It's exhausting. And it's three people. It's three and a guest, so it's like it's a lot. Yeah. There's not a lot of room for like quiet, pensive like no. <laughs> meditation. It's never. It doesn't get serious very often. I mean, it does, but but it's rare. I was in taking a lift yesterday and talking to the driver about the new Adele song. He was like, I don't think it's that good. <laughs> like after two years, it could have been better. I was like, yeah, you're right. I haven't even fucking heard it. I'm not even in touch. I mean, I it, all. it depends. Sometimes I am. I, I don't even know why. I've heard, I just watched the video because it was on Facebook or whatever. Um, My Spotify is just... Techno oh. and Enya. I mean, I listen to the same. I listen to the same shit, so I don't. I don't listen to anything new ever. It's awful. I see what you're listening. Sometimes everyone. What? Oh my god! One time, I think I listened <laughs> oh no. to something because you were listening to. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to know what it was. Lana Del Rey, that ultra violence song. Oh yeah, yeah. This was a long time ago. Uh-huh. I'm not. I mean, I. I, I usually put mine on private session. I always forget. So yeah, I've got a lot of weird shit up there that I've listened to. Gus Polinski's Polka Playlist. I, that's one I listen to. <laughs> I um, Yeah, I've got a lot of weird... Polka's like a good way to snap out of it. That actually sounds good. It feels like it would be good to listen to to uh, work like while you're working. <laughs> Do you have an album? Did you record? No, I was going to record one this year and then I just like... I don't know. I need to get my shit together and look through my old jokes and stuff. I need to just fucking do my own, but I... Yeah, you should. I'm such a It's hard. It's a lot to get that together. Yeah. I'm the same way, and I'm also like... I had this idea for one, because I went through this like whole thing where I was like really... I don't know, like ashamed of what it, of my material, because I thought my family was like ashamed of it. Dude, totally. Yeah, so I was like, okay, I'm going to do an album that's like 40 minutes of clean jokes for one... Thing. Let's go this way. And then like four, like basically a double album that's like half clean and half like dirty. So I still have that. Like, yeah, half clean. <laughs> Is that? I like that idea. Like half. <laughs> like it was gonna be called like family and friends, and the family side's like very like my family can listen to this. You and know. friends. Yeah. So <laughs> I think I'm still gonna do that, but I need to get my shit together, like you know, and huh. figure it out. Yeah, I'm trying not to say huh, because huh. I realize that has like a. People think it it means something it doesn't for me. Oh, I don't think so. Huh. Which means you're considering what they just said. It sounds like you're judging. Huh. <laughs> doesn't it? No, I don't think so. Okay. I'm pretty like... I've had people like respond. Oh my God, look at this tree. Wow. Oh, wow. This tree is awesome. There's so many colors. I'm going to say, I'm going to call that a Japanese maple. Because that's the only one I know when it's that bright. You this just call so it a Japanese cool. maple. <laughs> <laughs> Nature picks. There's usually a big drum circle going on. Oh, really? Near, well, it's up here. I live for a drum circle. David Cross and, uh, what's his name? Bob, Bob Odenkirk. Odenkirk had this thing for a while called, it was a newsletter called Notes from the Drum Circle. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, it was really... It was Do you think anybody time. ever, like, it starts becoming a drum square and somebody gets pissed? <laughs> Sorry, that's the <laughs> nice. dumbest joke. I love that. <laughs> no, a drum square. There Such should a be a dad joke. A drum triangle. Yeah, a drum rectangle. A drum pentagram. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah. I'm really excited. I'm going to see a Broadway show tomorrow. What are you seeing? Fun Home. Fun you heard Home. Of it? It's like, it's based on a graphic novel by Alison Bechdel, who's like the woman who yeah, the Bechdel, Bechdel test. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's about her growing up. She she was gay and she didn't realize it, but her father was also gay. And they ran a funeral home, which fun home. Um, <laughs> and it's just a really, it's a great, the novel is great because it like, time is very fluid in it. It goes back and forth a bunch. And I saw one of the songs on the Tonys and it like blew my mind. So I'm really excited to see it. You sing? You can sing, right? Yeah, I can I can sing. I would love to like my like dream is to like somehow get famous doing comedy and then 
like be like, oh, I'm also in plays now. Like, I'm a, yeah, <laughs> I'm also on Broadway. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I feel singing seems way more vulnerable than me than stand up. Oh, me too. To if I ever sing, it's so much more nerve wracking. I really love music, and I feel I have very like natural music inclinations when I do it, but I don't know how to play any instruments or anything, and like. I would love to write songs and stuff, but you know, because I need to like find somebody who can do the music part or something. Is I mean, my boyfriend musical? can. We just um, my grandfather is. My, he was like a big band musician, and he no way he knew like fourteen instruments, and he was just like a, he was he Glenn Miller. He was Glenn Miller's like right hand man. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? No. I was joking. No, that's true. He was like that's awesome. His name was Jerry Gray, and he was his like uh, he was like his um, composer and. Get the All fuck the stuff. out of arranger. here. Arranger, that's the word, arranger. Yeah, so he worked with him, and so, yeah, and that whole side of the family is super uh, musical. So, yeah, it's definitely in there. It's in my blood, for sure. What about you? No, I don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> where some, did it go? There's something in there. I think my musical aspiration came out of the family, like, bloodline of... Uh, delusion and not talent <laughs> I well I, I was in a big band in college mm -hmm. I was a rhythm guitar player and I loved it I really wanted to be a musician that's really what I wanted to do yeah and then I got into audio stuff I worked in this multi-track recording studio this big orchestra we, uh, there? Here? Right. studio but yeah I don't know I just I need to get a guitar. I sold all my stuff at one point. Right. Which you should never do. You should never sell musical instruments. You didn't feel like freedom and clarity? I did, but it's in the same way you say, like, fuck you, I never want to talk to you again, to somebody, which you and feel you freedom. Regret. Yeah. Yeah, and then you regret it. Yeah, let's sit here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get a guitar again, I think, and just screw around. Yeah, you should. Yeah, I'm really regretful I didn't learn anything growing up because that would be a big asset to me now. No piano or nothing? No, I like learned clarinet for a minute and gave up. I love the clarinet. Yeah, I didn't, I just chose two ADD to stick with anything. Yeah, I played sax in junior high. Oh my god, I haven't had a grilled cheese sandwich in a long time. <laughs> this is, looks good. You played sax? Mm hmm. That's cool. Alto. I do like, one thing I love about New York, I do love the uh, people playing in the subway. Yeah, there's some cool. amazing people. There's this one lady who plays an accordion that I kind of fell in love with at one point. Oh yeah, I saw, I think I saw her. On 2nd Avenue? I'm not Sometimes she plays Gangster's Paradise on the accordion and it's fucking amazing. I could tell, like she's definitely like a girl that I was like, oh, all the guys have been mm -hmm. right now. That's probably her. I saw a perfect girl the other day. I was trying to write a joke about it, it was like, I saw her, I saw the girl that we all want to be. She had like a bike and she was reading a book like over her bike and she had like a nose piercing and it was just like, oh, you're perfect. That's her. You know <laughs> yeah. that that's what yeah. everybody wants. Mm -hmm. Look at those turtles on that rock. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of them. So you like like people here? Do you feel like you made like good friends here? Yeah, way more than I did when I was in Los Angeles. Oh, that's good. But I just wasn't there very long in right. Los Angeles. Yeah, it takes a minute, I think, to like really get to know people. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I feel like I this is more of a home, like comedy-wise. And that's the only reason that's I good. came here, was comedy. It wasn't like right. I saw a lot of Woody Allen movies and wanted to come <laughs> here. You know what I mean? It, that wasn't it at all for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing about moving from LA. I really do have a good crew there. Even though I feel disconnected from people a lot, and a lot of times I'm like, are we actually friends? Or, you know. Yeah. But we are. It's just like everyone's busy and sad and, you know, busy doing, and sad. doing their own thing. <laughs> so. Busy and sad, right? <laughs> that's really the predominant mood of our time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm doing this crazy, like, it's a two month long, like, thing where you basically like they bring you do it six days a week you go to the place they give you all your food for two months you're doing you're doing this mm -hmm. that's awesome i'm so scared but i can't like 
go home for Thanksgiving or like. So I did you take you took time off to go to in New York? Um, no, no, I'm starting on next week. Oh. I'm not doing it right now. I'm eating this grilled cheese. That's why I'm eating. <laughs> I was I'm gonna eating. say I'm gonna have to take this grilled cheese away. Yeah, no, I'm like do it. Uh, I have to start next week, so I'm like, well, here's my last week of you know eating cheese and bread. That's been one of the hardest things about being here. Is I was in fucking great shape when I got here, and then I just I've gained it's, like it's twenty only, can, it's, thirty it's pounds really of fear. It's hard to eat healthy here. It's impo- It's yeah. It's, it shouldn't be hard, but it's. You know, you're like going home at two in the morning doing stand up. Right, and your options are very limited. It's pizza. Mm -hmm. And I would do this thing. I mean, I got food issues, man. Like, you know, I eat my feelings and fear and stuff. Oh, yeah. And I would do this thing, especially some nights where I would like celebrate on the way home and like get candy at like several different little. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like a progressive dinner with candy. <laughs> progressive, oh, I have done, progressive dessert. I have done that. Yeah, I have done that. Yeah, food as a reward, as a you know, or Comfort. covering up your feeling, or just anything. I mean, I'm in the middle of that actually too. I'm in a big like. I sign. It's like I do all these things where I like sign up for these big things to like help me with this stuff because I can't do it. I'm bad, bad at doing them on, on my own, you know. So I'm also in this, the middle of this stop fighting. It's called stop fighting food, and yeah, it's basically just about. It's been really good. Even I haven't like been doing it as much as I should. Like you listen to like these like lecture things. You have kind of like homework stuff to do. Mm-hmm. But um, the idea is to stop having food brain, which is what I have. It's just, like I constantly upset. Like I'd wake up in the morning and just be like obsessed with all day what I'm gonna eat. Not just like oh I'm hungry I should eat something, but just like really obsessive food thoughts and like you plan what you're gonna see. That's my problem. Is I don't plan. Well. That's part of it, but also a lot of it would just be like if I was feeling any emotion, just like straight going to like you know the drive-through, or wherever, and yeah. Just what's your shit. go-to? What makes you feel best? I mean, I love donuts. Donuts is pretty up there. Oh my! I almost took you to this place. <laughs> Seriously, this shit will ruin your life. Really? It's called Dough, and they're like probably they got to be like seven or eight hundred calories each. Oh my god! They're huge, and I think they're fried in the fat of the poor. Like, <laughs> Like, they're so fucking good. Right. Yeah, no, donuts are pretty, are my, like... Yeah, because in L.A., there, for some reason, there's a really good there's donut. There's such, there's so many good donuts there. I live right by this one, this place called, place called Ms. Donut, and it's, like, if you go there at midnight, the guy's making them fresh, and you can get them out the little, like, side window, and it's, oh. Oh, man, that great. does sound good. But the idea behind this thing is, is basically, like, changing the way you feel about this kind of food. Like, you can have it, but you go up there, and you're, like... You know, you order like a donut and you really enjoy it. And you don't yeah. like have to cram a million in your face. You just like enjoy one and you're not obsessed with the fact that A, you're eating it. Mm-hmm. Or B, like that it's bad for you. Because the obsession with it being bad is like where it's you get in trouble. Yeah, because then you just are like, well, I might as well just go crazy. Or you like, you know, you just do the lot of self-hate stuff because of that. So the idea behind this whole class thing is to just like, and actually even just the first day, like it really... Like I listened to some of the lecture thing and it really What's impacted it me. Again? It's called Stop Fighting Food. The woman's name is Isabel Fox and Duke. <laughs> it's like crazy Oh yeah, name. the Fox and Dukes. Yeah, the Fox and Dukes. We're going to the Fox and Dukes <laughs> for dinner. Um, yeah, so if you look her up, it's some interesting like theories. Even just the first one was just like talking about being hungry, you know, and it was like what hunger is and what that means. And that alone, I was like, oh, it made me like think differently about it. So. I think that little thing, the natural little thing that says, like, hey, you're hungry. I think mine might be broken. Really? Yeah, because I don't realize it until I'm, like, fucking suicidal. So you're really starving? Yeah. Well, that's what it's kind of, it's about being more intuitive. It's called, like, intuitive eating and, like, paying, hmm. like actually paying attention to your body or whatever. I'm I don't know. I'm definitely paying attention to my body. <laughs> I can feel my love handles. <laughs> yeah. It's, a. Uh, it's hard. I mean... That's a really hard part of like trying to do all the stuff to comedy. In and LA, man. Wanting, I, oh, by the God, time LA I left LA, I knew how much it would cost to freeze off my love handles <laughs> and get hair replacement <laughs> surgery. Seriously. Oh, I've looked into that. I knew shit. exactly how much yeah. it was. That's and that's where I was at. Yeah, I've looked into that freezing, and I'm doing freezing fat. Yeah, I know. It's like we're supposed to be the normal people. We're the character actors, you know. It's reasonable to freeze your fat. It's like three grand. <laughs> And you can get, like, packages. They have deals. Oh, yeah. I've seen that shit on, like, Groupon. Yeah, you can finance all that shit, too. And which cracks me up, because I like to think there's, like, some collections agent who's going after somebody who hasn't paid for their tits. (laughs) 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 
Yeah, that's so funny. That that does happen. I'm sure it happens. Yeah, so I'm about to like embark on this really intense, like very intense workout thing. But I think it's it'll be good. I need something to like kickstart me in general because this that's depression the has been it. really bad. And like I feel like it'll keep me accountable. They give you all your food, so that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. And it's two months, but like it's literally like I can't even go home for Christmas. Two months is a long time in like body. It's time. a long time because like you think like out of your life it's very short, but in like if you're actually doing it, it's gonna be long. But I'm I'm excited. I feel like hopefully, I've always felt like all this should help me back, like my health and my body crap and all that. So I'm really hoping that it'll like at least help me kickstart it. I don't know. Yeah, but I also heard this other thing about how like shame is like you also reward yourself with shame without realizing it like you'll eat a donut and feel shameful but that's actually you doing the same thing as you would as if you were rewarding yourself mm -hmm. you're rewarding yourself but in a negative yeah i i talked to my therapist about that yeah she was like yeah it's also the cycle is not just the eating it's also like what you feel about the eating that you're like letting yourself i think it is about getting away from that like negativity and not hating yourself. It all comes down to that, I think, really, right? It's just like not liking yourself and so you just beat yourself up all the time, including the shame it makes, stuff. It makes me mad sometimes that people don't realize like that it's like guys have, like I've had that since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I've had, like been super uncomfortable. I mean, I realize the pressures are different, but like. Yeah, I think it's just the pressures, but I mean, everyone But the actual with this stuff. feeling of being in my body, mm -hmm. yeah, that goes way back. But I mean, that's other stuff too, but yeah. Those turtles are not, they're okay with their bodies. <laughs> It'd be nice to have a shell. That would be really nice. I actually know some comic who has a joke about that. He's like, they have like a built-in weight control system because you can't get fat. You can't get the shell. fat. Yeah, you can't, <laughs> can't outgrow the shell. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. I but that's the thing again animals they don't get fat unless they're unless they're pets you know who are just yeah. getting fed overfed maybe we're pets they, what's that song there's like we'll make great pets <laughs> we're somebody's pets yeah yeah you're right they don't they don't they they only need they only eat what they need they don't go overboard you know? well dogs though if you leave them alone with like a tub of butter they'll eat well them. that's what i mean though like if if they're around humans or whatever, yeah. but you don't know, street dogs like aren't fat, you know, and they have access to like a shitload of food. I think. No, it's wrong. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't believe anything I just said. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. My brother ate a stick of butter when he was a kid once. Just straight. I don't did know why. I think, but he like did not eat it for a long time after that. Do you want to just go eat some butter? That'd be so funny Let's to do right eat now. some butter. What if we were sitting on this bench at the park? They have flavored butter. Yeah, but that doesn't come in like sticks. You gotta eat a stick. You can make marijuana butter. Oh yeah. Oh, no thanks. I can't do weed anymore. Really? Mm -mm. No. Nothing? No, it like gives me anxiety really bad. Oh my God. Tell like, me about horribly. it. Like I, I mean, I have no real moral issues with it. It just didn't, oh, it no, never made me that. feel I, I was like a kind of a stoner at one point in my life and um, I loved it, but now it's gone. Yeah, I talk too much. I feel like my cheekbones are like sticking out to here. <laughs> I just always felt like I was doing it wrong. Yeah, it's too bad. It's really fun. When it's good, it's really good, but it's not worth the risk. Yeah. Winter, man. I never thought it would happen this time, but it's happening again. I thought you'd get a break this year. I thought maybe it wouldn't happen. It's pretty, it's really, really nice though right now. Yeah. It was really nice last week. It was so sunny and like warm. I feel so much better when it's sunny and more. It's amazing that I haven't sought out like, like that kind of climate for myself. I mean, yeah. LA is nice. It is nice to like walk out and have it be gorgeous all the time. <laughs> I think I felt lonelier in LA though. Yeah, well then, I think it's a very specific type of... My neuroses fit in pretty well here. I don't know. I mean, just being you're just surrounded by humanity so much more here. Yeah. And that's... I enjoy that, but, like, I do like being in my little bubble there, like, in my car and all that stuff, too. Oh, yeah. I, missed dry. I had to sell mine. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I do... I'm, like, I like... It's, like, I can get up and leave when I want to leave and then be home whenever, you know? Yeah. Uh, I miss my 
I miss my parents a little bit, but I, yeah. I'll go home for Thanksgiving and I'll just probably sit in the parking lot of the Meyer. Do you know what a Meyer is? It's mm-hmm. like Walmart and talk to people on the phone. That's yeah. usually what I do when I go home. Do I'm you, depressed. This is, yeah. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Like I'm, I want to like banter with people, but I'm like, this is, yeah, this is bad. I think it's the seasons. I don't know. I'm fragile, Barbara. I, I mean, it's. I'm too fragile for this world. <laughs> we all are though. <laughs> I think everyone is. They're just like, everyone's either putting up a front or not, you know? Yeah. I just want to be okay for a little bit. That'd yeah. be nice. It's hard. This will pass. This is just a season. I think I just kind of overturned some big rocks in my heart. Right. So now you're... Yeah, I, I feel that for sure. I'm definitely going through like a really hard time of working through stuff. And it's really shitty. But I just have to know that hopefully on the other yeah. end, you know it's better because I've had like intellectual awareness of this stuff but now it's maybe like seeping Mm -hmm. deeper yeah I think it takes a long time to figure out all that and then figure out like okay now 38 yeah well it's like now that you know this how do you deal with it that's the biggest thing I feel like all this is just this journey for me to be just like a youth pastor (laughs) someday you're just gonna discover Christ um (laughs) I did I grew up with that yeah but like it's like my worst fear is like all this stuff is just going to make me this really well-adjusted insurance salesman. Right. I'm going to be Willie Loman. Like, I'll, I'll, like, over, I'll, I'll heal and everything, and then I'll just be this boring. You'll just be like, fuck it. My worst fear is being boring. That's one of my worst fears. Don't, being, I don't think you should be scared of that, though. Of being boring? Yeah. I would embrace it because, <laughs> because, like, some of my most... I think I get the same way. Like, I get scared about getting older because I'm like, I'm going to get boring. And, yeah. But then I'm like, I want to go home early and make dinner and do this shit. Like, who ca- I, I don't care. That's not boring. But I think that's, to me, that's what it is because the other option is going out to a show or going, you know. Yeah. When you're doing comedy, like, every night, though, you do want some quiet. Yeah, you need, like, a break. Yeah. You know, What's like, the show you guys do? It's called Sauce. It's, a, like, a oh, yeah, sauce. pizza place. Yeah. Didn't you have something at Echoes Under Sunset at one point or something? Yeah, I was doing something there, Lady to Lady, and then like no, this kind of like experimental show called Noble Experiment that I'm trying to start up again. Yeah, what is that? I saw that. That's really fun. It's like two comics. I pair up two comedians. They have like eight minutes to do anything but their own stand-up. And then you just kind of like <laughs> see what comes out, you know? Does it? It's really fun. People do sketches or characters. Or One time, my favorite was these guys roasted each other, uh-huh. but they wrote the roast checks and then they, they had to read their, the roast checks of themselves. So they had to like read about their own roast joke on them. Oh, I like that. That was really funny. Oh my God. So that was a really good. So it's just kind of like, I don't know, just getting out of the same old, like, you know, they're going to be funny because they're stand-ups, but like. Are you good at roasting? Yeah, I love roasting. I'm really good at writing roast jokes. I just want to stay like that hurts my feelings. <laughs> I mean, I haven't gotten roast. I, I did one roast at the comedy store, and I. The, in the that weird silver belly room. Is yeah, that still in the covered in like? No. I feel like there was like aluminum foil. On no, it. it's not like there's some mirrors and stuff. But, oh yeah. Um, the one of the jokes that she did to me and like that like still sticks with me is um, and she won. I was so pissed. She but she barely won, so so that's okay. She did a. Uh, Bar- what it, I'm trying to, I want to word it correctly. Like, oh, Barbara got, Barbara got a new, a role in the new ABC show, Fresh Off the Boat. Uh, she's starring as the boat. <laughs> <laughs> and that's such a good joke, but yeah. it like really stuck in there. That is good. <laughs> I was at this party one time and this guy told me my eyes were close to the other. That's the perfect roast. <laughs> I've never stopped thinking about that. He just, he was, he said it just within the conversation. <laughs> right. And he goes, your eyes are pretty closer together. Oh my God. And I'm like. And that's all you think about my, Ever since that comment, I've been tracking the progress of my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to be like Cyclops You should get point. like the um, fat burner, like insert fat in, into the middle of your eyes and then. You got to like rearrange your whole skull. No, I'm just. I usually, I used to wear glasses. I think it was when I took my glasses off. Right. What was that? I don't know. It's very determined. I like the spontaneous power walker. 
that but it's you like see. such a half-assed power walk yeah i can't wait to be old and like don't care if anyone wants to fuck me or anything <laughs> you know what i mean Mhm. Mm i do i was born that way i mean i care about i was born that way well i care about wanting people wanting to fuck me but I just like can't wait till I'm, you know, that that like Amy Schumer sketch about like last fuckable day for those actresses. <laughs> like I I look forward to being in my like 70s and just knowing that like I'm not, you know. Yeah. Like I don't have to worry. I'm not going to give a fuck anymore about guys or whatever. <sighs> I'm excited for your thing your exercise thing i kind of want to i know i'm pretty i'm it's I'm, good to have structure like that no i need it and like especially because i've been in such a bad depressed place and working from home i've been like okay you know i would be really good for me get up and work out right work you know yeah but i have not been able to make myself do that and this is like the workout is every day from 10 to 11 which is the perfect time and it's like i have to do it so i feel like having to do it and having this schedule is going to be really good for me totally and doing it for two months is like the perfect amount of time to be like, yeah. oh, I like this. this I can, is, it's like I know. can do two months. Yeah. I think, here's my prediction for you. Yeah, what do you think? I think, well, and this is, if this was me, I think, I think that I would feel happy having that one organizing principle for my life for a little while. Like I think that, so. That helps. I think I really need it because I've been in a rut for a very long time and it's like, and I think it can only help me, you know? Yeah. It would be crazy if somehow it made my life worse. I can't see that. <laughs> you just come off the rails. <laughs> yeah. You get mean. Yeah, what if I just you get, get like, mean? mean and horrible. And... I think you've got to be a little mean to be thin. Do you think? Mm. I feel like people that are in perfect shape are a little bit mean. Maybe. you got to have a mean streak. Maybe not. I mean, I do have a mean streak, so I'm not really worried about that. What's that look like? It's, like, very catty, like, you know, when you're, like, It'll come out with my boyfriend sometimes. What I'll do you just, fight? Like, How do you fight? The, say the... I don't know. I'll say really cool stuff sometimes. Like you... I can't think of an example. His but... You make fun of his dick. Because <laughs> no, no. you can't bounce back from No, that. I haven't done that. Um, I don't know, but I definitely will like really get in there sometimes. You know? Do you ever do it and you're like, Jesus, I didn't know that was in there. Why was oh, I so yeah. mean all of a yeah. sudden? That'll... I, that happens to me. Yeah, that'll happen like... Or just the things I think to myself that I don't say. I'm like, ooh, that's, that's rough. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you actually, you know how to get there? I love seeing all these bike carcasses also, too. Yeah. Um, you'll go to 14th, you'll go to Union Square, 14th Street. And transfer to the L. Okay. Yeah, I have it on this little thing. Transfer to the L, I go, got it. Well, thanks a lot for doing this. I feel better. Yeah, no, thank you. It's good it's so to good just to go you. out and connect with somebody. No, that's I needed it as well. So I'm glad we could. I'm glad we could do it. Now I can listen back to it whenever I'm feeling, you know. Yeah, it'll probably be a couple of weeks, but yeah, I'll let you know. All right, let me take. Should I take this out? I guess. Yeah. Do you want me to swipe you? Um. Yeah, if you don't mind, I gotta. Here, I gotta. Try and find it in my bag on the, on the subway. All right, man. Thanks. Yeah, thank you so much. I'll keep in touch. I, I may come out there this winter just to get out of my head. Yeah, definitely let me know. Okay, you gotta yeah, run. Show okay. All right, bye. Dude. Bye. What's that? A single? Oh, I don't. I had some. I just swiped my friend. Well, that was Barbara. What do you think? That was me and Barbara. That was the two of us combined to make a uh, specific kind of thing. That's what happens with good conversation, I think. 
You make a thing. It's a moment. It was a good one. I enjoyed that. I think she's funny. She's also really... She's pretty good uh, with people. With hecklers. I find that... That's a real mark of someone's maturity. As a human. Not just a stand-up. Being interrupted... How you deal with being interrupted... Uh, while you're in the middle of something is a real measure of who you are. Did I say it's G-R-A-Y? That's what it is. Uh, find her on Twitter at Babs Gray. Uh, she's also on the Lady to Lady podcast, one of the three, the triumvirate of ladies, funny ladies, at Lady to Lady Comedy on Twitter. That's the two, the number two, not the word two. This is me saying goodbye, and man, hold on, okay? Hold on through Thanksgiving. It a, can be a bleak time. A lot of emotions. Not just bleak, just lots of emotions. We'll, we'll be fine. Think about what you got. Thanks. Gratitude. Have that. Etude is a... I don't like the ending of that word. But I'm thankful for the beginning. <laughs> Grat. Grazie. But etude sounds like... Eh. Etude. I don't like it. All right. See you later, guys.